Hello there, my fellow fans of building-sized guns, and welcome to another episode in my overall Collegia Titanica series. A few days ago, I brought to your attention a video concerning some of the lighter and shorter ranged kinds of weapons, which are predominantly used on Scout Titans. Today, I wanted to continue talking about these, but at the same time to take it to the next level. So, in today's episode, I would like to talk to you about some of the more common Battle Titan weapons. I am your host, the Grim Dark Narrator, and without further ado, let us learn more about these guns, which are too big even for Warhounds, shall we? Battle Titan weapons are considerably more destructive and longer ranged than the so-called Scout Titan weapons. They are mounted commonly on Reaver and Warlord Titans. Most are designed to destroy other Titans, engage enemy detachments, or bring devastation to fortifications. Now, there are way too many Battle Titan weapons to cover in a single video, but for today I will do my best to cover the more popular ones. The Gatling Blaster the Gatling Blaster is an immense, pneumatically driven, six-barreled, air-cooled, electrically fired rotary auto weapon that fires heavy caliber rounds. The weapon is commonly mounted on Reaver class titans, but they can also be mounted on the carapace hardpoints of an Imperator class titan. This weapon is comprised of large, multiple, heavy caliber barrels. Its staggering rate of fire makes it an ideal weapon for use against infantry, light vehicles, and even small structures. Each of the Gatling Blaster's six barrels fires once in turn during each revolution of the barrel cluster. The multiple barrels provide both a very high rate of fire and contribute to long weapon life by minimizing barrel erosion and heat generation. The gun rotor, barrel assembly, and ammunition feed system are rotated by a hydraulic drive motor through a system of flexible drive shafts. The round is fired by an electric priming system, where an electrical current from a firing lead passes through the firing pin to the primer as each round is rotated into firing position. One of the drawbacks of the initial design was that the ejection of spent links created considerable problems. The Adeptus Mechanicus compensated for this issue by creating a linkless feed system. The application that they chose for this linkless feed system is double-ended, aka it returns spent shell casings back to the magazine. The installation of the Gatling Blaster on Reaver class titans are double-ended, because the ejection of empty cartridges can cause a foreign object damage hazard for supporting infantry and because the retention of spent cases assists in maintaining the center of gravity of the Titan. The Gatling Blaster is a weapon carried mostly by Reaver-class Titans. Its multiple-barreled Gatling autocannon fires thousands of rounds per minute in a destructive torrent, turning the Titan into a highly effective anti-personnel and anti-vehicle fire support weapon. The Hellstorm Cannon the Hellstorm Cannon is a huge, six-barreled, directed-energy weapon, typically mounted on an Imperator-class Titan or Warlord-class Battle Titan. This can completely decimate an entire army in just one cataclysmic salvo. Able to fire in quick succession, the Hellstorm Cannon can give an Imperator Titan unparalleled firepower against enemy Titans. The Hellstorm Cannon is so powerful that it has been known to strip the Void Shields from a Warlord in one volley. The Melta Cannon The Melta Cannon is a massive Imperial Melta weapon that makes use of a miniature fusion reaction to produce a blast of intense searing heat. This weapon system is commonly mounted on Reaver class and Warlord class titans, but can also be mounted on the carapace hardpoints of a massive Imperator. A smaller version of this weapon is also mounted upon the Devil Dog variant of the Hellhound APC. The Melta Cannon works by submolecular thermal agitation in a manner comparable to microwave irradiation. This formidable heat-based plasma weapon induces a minute submolecular nuclear fusion reaction within a highly pressurized pyrum petrol fuel mix, 
and then projects the resulting plasma from the barrel as a blast of super intense heat. This is capable of melting plasteel or plascrete, and its devastating effects instantaneously evaporate living tissue. The Melta cannon makes no noise when fired, but the superheating of the air produces a distinctive hiss which becomes a roaring blast. The one drawback of this weapon is that it can only be used effectively at close range, so it is only employed for close assault and support roles. The Plasma Annihilator The Plasma Annihilator is one of the largest known land-based plasma weapons. It is often mounted on the arms of Imperator-class Titans, and delivers enough firepower to be considered a Titan killer. Directly linked to their Titan's monstrously powerful plasma reactors, a plasma annihilator can not only lay down extremely heavy fire, but also do so at a high rate of fire for such a massive weapon. Its ability to devastate a large land surface area makes the weapon both formidable and highly desirable. Not much is known about these weapons beyond their awesome destructive capability. The plasma unleashed by the weapon explodes upon impact with all the power of a miniature sun, forming craters hundreds of meters in diameter and turning sand into glass. The simple act of firing such a weapon is destructive in and of itself, as it produces a deafening roar which shatters glass for kilometers in all directions. Lesser titans, such as orc gargons, are reduced to little more than melted sludge by the powerful sunfire emitted from a plasma annihilator. The Apocalypse Missile Launcher The Apocalypse Missile Launcher is a multiple launch rocket system, or essentially a rocket artillery system. It is commonly mounted on the carapace of Reaver-class titans, or the carapace hardpoints of the bigger titans. This weapon can fire guided and unguided projectiles, and can hit a target a substantial distance away. The Apocalypse Missile Launcher is often used in so-called shoot-and-scoot tactics, firing its rockets rapidly and then moving away to avoid enemy fire. The weapon is comprised of the Apocalypse Launcher loaded with 20 rockets, packaged in two 10-rocket pods. The launcher, mounted on a Titan's chassis, is a highly automated self-loading and self-aiming system. It contains a fire control computer that integrates the vehicle and rocket launching operation. The rockets can be fired individually or in ripples of 2 to 20. Accuracy is maintained in all firing modes because the launcher's computer re-aims the launcher between rounds. The launcher's fire control aspects allows firing missions to be carried out either manually or automatically. In a typical fire mission, a command post transmits the selected target data directly to the fire control computer, which aims the launcher and prompts the crew to arm and fire a pre-selected number of rounds. Multiple mission sequences can be pre-programmed and stored in the fire control computer by the Titans attending Moderati. The Quake Cannon Since this thing is also used on super heavy tanks, I will be talking about the weapon itself and not just its relation to Titans. A Quake Cannon is the scourge of enemy fortresses across the galaxy. When mounted on the super heavy Imperial tank known as the Bane Sword, whose armor is very resilient, it becomes one of the Imperial Guard's most effective ways of breaching a stronghold. Though primarily a siege gun of formidable power, suited to wrecking fortifications, there will be very little left of any war engine that finds itself in the Quake Cannon's sights. It is the ammunition of the Quake Cannon, the ghoulish Quake Shell, that marks out the weapon as unique. Each shell contains fragments of a planet that has undergone the ultimate Imperial sanction of Exterminatus. Whenever planets are destroyed, Tech priests and Magos Geologists from the Adeptus Mechanicus are sent over to the sector to capture and store the shattered planet's death throes as quickly as possible. A very dangerous task in and of itself. From orbit, as their void ships are buffeted by the destruction, these ghoulish blast waves are captured by immense arcane wave recorders. Later they are replicated back on Forge Worlds, where this energy is reborn in the form of quake shells. 
It is not uncommon for such shells to be named after the planets from which their potency had been captured. Quake shells sometimes scream as they rocket through the air, and many suggest that this noise is in fact the combined death wails of the planet's population. The tech priests in turn have not quashed this macabre rumors. The weight of a quake shell can depend upon the power of the exterminatus from which the energy was extracted. Though their mass is marginally less than those fired by a Storm Sword's Hellhammer cannon, they are fired over significantly longer distances. It is the extreme range of the cannon and its quake effects on impact that makes it much admired by those Imperial commanders involved in siege warfare. When one of the shells strikes its target, it does so with enormous heart-stopping power, transferring the echoes of a planet-fissuring blast into a localized area. When the smoke clears, if a smoldering hole has not appeared in the fortress walls, then the shell will have caused instant fissures. Fault lines will begin to appear across the perimeter of the citadel, meaning the next blow will be the one to enable Imperial forces to breach its defenses. The recoil of the Quake Cannon is enormous, meaning that the Bane Sword's design is among the most robust of all vehicles of the Imperium. Being based on the STC of the Bane Blade, only a handful of Forge Worlds are capable of manufacturing both the vehicle and the weapon. The Quake Cannon is also mounted upon Imperial Titans, such as the Warlord, where the engineering crew and servitors maintain the weapon along with the utterances of the appropriate prayers. It was for these Titans that the weapons were originally designed, and their Principi utilized them in much the same way as the Bane Swords which would later carry them as well, blasting their way through fortress walls so that their god machines could march onwards to victory. On occasion, if no more suitable weapons are available, a skillful commander will be able to maneuver a vehicle to direct the Quake Cannon's fire towards a large enemy. The reality is that the Quake Cannon is hull-mounted, and the Bane Sword is not a particularly swift vehicle, means that it is not especially suited to hunting demonic war engines, monstrous Xeno's lifeforms, or traitor titans, except at a very long range. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about some of the more popular Battle Titan weapons for today. Which one of these would you mount on your god engine? Let me know in the comments below. Was this video entertaining or informative to you? In that case, please consider clicking the like button and subscribing for future content, as it does help out my channel a lot. Also, if you'd like to give my channel a small helping hand, please go check my Patreon page, the link for which is in the video description. I thank you very much for watching, and I wish you all an amazing day. The Emperor Protects.